call it people technology. Ready we are then on Maruti Suzuki presents ESPN Cricket for T20 timeout as match number two of this restart. Let's go at it that way, at least for the first few games. KKR and RCB all set to kick off at uh, Abu Dhabi in just over 20 minutes from now in a in a campaign that's now been headlined as Virat Kohli's last as captain of uh, the Royal Challengers Bangalore. So we've got plenty to discuss as the toss has already happened in Abu Dhabi. Over in Dubai, though, in the most expensive hotel that the BCCI could manage, they gave it to the commentators. The players are somewhere else, occupying the two executive suites. Adib Das Gupta and Ian Bishop. Gentlemen, good evening. I couldn't wait for really? you to come. I've had that opening friend for so long. Anyway, uh, <laughs> toss has happened. Toss has happened in Abu Dhabi. It's gone RCB's way. And lots of changes, Deep. Uh, it looks like Shrikar yeah. Bharat's going to get a game. Sachin Baby's going to get a game. And one in the Hasaranga is going to get a game. Yeah, I mean, uh, Hasaranga, I can still understand. I mean, the kind of form that he's in. And you needed somebody who can bat a bit and pull those uh, wrist spin. But yeah, uh, Sachin Baby, Una Bharat, and, uh, and, and even uh, uh, Ayer. Uh, it's just interesting. Yeah. I mean, I just want to see that batting order because I'm still trying to figure out, with especially with KKR, there are quite a few top order batters there, you know, and, and I'm just trying to figure out who's going to open, who might not open. Uh, that's going to be an interesting one. You think they're still discussing that in the dugout themselves, KKR? Because that's how Brendan McCollum seems to roll, Ian Bishop. Uh, all this chat about Sunil Narayan and whether he should be at the top of the order, that's where he batted in the CPL. They now put in a Venkatesh Ayer who's likely to open. This is a KKR team that have confused us in the IPL in the past. It looks like they're going to do that today as well, Bish. Bish, I needed to I just longer. give me... There you I've got you now. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they're going to keep us guessing for a little while longer. But mm. they need to get themselves together. They're a more talented team in terms of the talent base, I think than we've seen with the results in the first phase. So Brendan McCullum being a proud former international player and captain and now coach will be hoping mm. that in the power play, they get off to better starts when they do back. That's the first thing that they need, whoever they put up there and maintain that aggressive tempo. Owen Morgan needs to get into better form because we know Andrew Russell, what he can do and what he will do if he spends time at the crease, Dinesh Kartik as well. The bowling yeah. looks quite good, actually, with Narayan and his economy, if not potency, and Chakravati uh, proceed Krishna Lockie Ferguson. So, But it's the batting for me, especially in the power play. I want to see how that goes. Yeah, it's, it, it's anyone's guess what that batting order will look like. As it turns out, it's going to be for the second half. They're going to have a bowl first KKR. Uh, Deep, can you tell us anything yeah. more about Venkatesh Ayer? You know, he's an all-rounder for MP. Got, got a few runs for them. Yeah, but not... I mean, he's a he's a he's a batter who can, who bowls a little bit of seam up. So it's mm. not that I, I won't call him an all rounder. He might be lucky yeah. to get a couple of overs out of him. Uh, but yeah, obviously the fact that you really haven't played a lot of domestic cricket in the last eighteen odd months. But uh, you know, I've, I saw him in in Sayed Mushtaq Ali, and he's, he's a lanky, what six foot two inch, you know, thin, but can hit a long ball. So uh, mm. uh, he has that ability to do that. So I think he's going to open because that's where I've seen him bat for MP, to be honest. Uh, so him and Gail, someone like Tripathi, might have to bat at four. Um, that's interesting. And that's interesting. And, and, and the other thing that Bish mentioned was about the bowling. And I'm looking at that team and I'm saying Sunil Narayan, Varun Chakravarti, Prasid Krishna, Lockie Ferguson are your four bowlers. And your fifth yeah. bowler will have to be between Andre Russell and maybe a bit of Nitish Rana. Hmm. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, you, I mean, that's your unless fifth you bowling. Get, unless you get that over or so out of Venkatesh Ayer, if that's what's yeah. gifted. Yeah, to maybe uh, yeah, an over or so from Venkatesh as well. Yeah. Uh, KKR have not had a good season. Seven wins and two losses. RCB excellent. Seven games and uh, sorry, seven games and uh, just uh, just the two defeats for RCB. That's where they stand on the points table. Let's talk a little bit about Kolkata to start with. Big reliance on their overseas West Indies players, Bish. Sunil Nara and Andre Russell we didn't quite see the best of them in the first half. What can we expect after these few months where they've played some T20 cricket, they've been in the CPL? What are the expectations out of Russell and Narayan now? Well, well Russell was Russell. at times very good in the in the CPL, in the Caribbean mm. Premier League, obviously. Uh, he struck the ball well. He's been training very hard. I think there are witnesses to the fact that he's been working out 
very, very hard. His bowling, I think, for about 75% of that CPL was vibrant. It was energetic. It was only towards maybe the last two games that he stopped charging in like mm. uh, a sports car. So I don't know if there was something there. But his bowling, he could give you four useful overs, four competent overs with the way he bowled for the first 75% of that tournament. Narayan, mm. the potency is not there in the bowling as it used to in times past for obvious reasons. We've talked about it. But he's still giving you a lot of control with the ball, good economy. And if the pitch conditions are conducive, he can smack the ball at the top or in the middle now. Right. If I could just extend on Russell, the bowler, Deep made that point. Uh, KKR will need overs out of him. In the first part of the IPL, he did not complete his four-over quota on any occasion, Vish. And we saw KKR wanted to use him in tough overs, 18 and 20 at times directly or 17, 19. Is he a better bowler than that now? Can you get three or maybe four overs out of him more regularly? I would hope so. If, if he is the bowler that I saw in the Caribbean Premier League and sometimes during the international season when we played against uh, Australia, for example, the West Indies, that is, uh, I saw a guy there who had upped his the level of his game just a little bit and he's more than just a couple of overs at the end. Now, it still takes some work from the, the captain, the guy on, the, on charge on the field to convey and communicate with him because sometimes his length can go awry or what he's trying he can get a little bit emotional but i i would like to believe that russell is a better bowler than just a couple of overs at the end all right fair enough if we talk about kolkata more holistically deep they don't find themselves in a good position on the points table big auction coming up owen morgan is now their captain where does the uh where does the where does the rise start from is it starting with their batting and owen morgan we're looking at Owen Morgan as well with his numbers. He's not been great for Kolkata. Could be a big season, this defining sort of six, seven games leading into a big auction next year for someone like KKR? Yeah, absolutely. No two ways about it because obviously I ex was expecting a lot from him uh, in terms of looking at his, you know, last two, three years in international cricket, what he's done across all, uh, I mean, both the white ball formats. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of expectation. Unfortunately, not just him, the, the, the whole batting order, as far as KK is concerned, did not fire in the first half. Whether yeah. it was Shubman Gale, whether it was Morgan, DK. I mean, DK is, I mean, I'm looking at that that playing 11 and it seems like he's slated to come at number 7 or something like that. 6-7. Mm -hmm. I So, I, I'm, I mean, I don't know. I mean, when I look at that team, I think the main issue in the first half, what I thought from, of KKR was they did not know they they. they the right playing 11 or the combination and i don't think they're they're anywhere close to it even now i mean I, mm. I, i'm i don't know it's, it just seems like that maybe they have maybe obviously you know they've they've been having practice sessions for last seven eight days maybe they have found the right combination but looking at that playing 11 it just just seems that they're, they're still searching for the right combination Hmm. All right. Another change that they'll have to make is Lockie Ferguson. You think now Bish will get a run of games. Pat Cummins was their big money signing. But Lockie Ferguson had an impact last season when he came in for a few games for, for KKR. This may still be okay. The Ferguson for Cummins bit somewhat fills the void that Pat Cummins leaves. As long as it's the best version of Lockie Ferguson, because Cummins was giving you control. He started to, to find a little bit of zone, not only with the bat, sometimes with the ball, with a little cameo as well. So what we saw from Lucky Ferguson, particularly down in Abu Dhabi, last he bowled a super over. I think he picked up five wickets in the game, including wickets yeah. in the super over at one point. So once we see the best version of him, he'll give you hustle. He'll give you, he's got a great slower ball as well, a change of pace. And at his best, he'll give you control. So once he brings that, I think we have something special to look forward to. Again, the caveat is once we see the best version of him. Yeah, anybody's guess as to how KKR would use a Lockie Ferguson. It seemed almost a, a rule deep last time that he comes in after the power play, doesn't take a new ball, uh, doesn't take the new ball. Looking at that bowling lineup, you've got Sunil Narayan, you've got Kunch Are you expecting some spin in the power play today? Uh, could be, yes. Uh, could be spin in the power play. Someone like Varun did bowl, bowl in the power play. You trusted again. Is predominantly uh, a new ball bowler. Even now, I think uh, so. I think Lockie Ferguson will be again uh, will be kept for for the second half of the innings, especially in the death overs. Is what I think. So you might see one over from Lockie Ferguson, but I don't think more than that. That'll be the max that he'll go bowling. Let's talk about Bangalore, shall we? Uh, good team this leap. Uh, 
perhaps exceeding expectations. There's been a bit of a break for a lot of players who haven't played a lot, though. Ebi de Villiers, Glenn Maxwell, uh, Harshal Patel's not had much of uh, a game as well since then. Is it in any way going to be a problem, or have we not come to expect that from the likes of AB anymore? Oh, obviously not from AB. I mean, I mean, come on, he's, he's a genius. So he's he's going to be at his best, irrespective whether he's played any cricket or not. Uh, I think the first half of uh, uh, of of this edition was was a great indicator of that because he hadn't played any international cricket or not much cricket, any competitive cricket to be honest. And he comes mm -hmm. back and he plays the way he did in the first few games. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, see, I mean, they've, they've struggled with their number three. So, Patidar and then Shabazz in a couple of games. So, uh, they've been looking for that number three. I think now they're going with uh, Kona Bharat because they're, I think, consciously does not want someone like a Maxwell or uh, ABD to come uh, in the power play over. So, I think that's predominantly the reason. If, if they get a good start... Uh, I guess then Kona Bharat will not be coming at three and Maxwell will be coming at three. So I think they, they've, they've figured out a, a, a role for them and they've, a well-defined role where I think Glenn Maxwell comes out after that six overs, ABDs out there around that 10th over, 9th over, uh, you know, not before that. So yeah, that, that looks good. I mean, I, I mean, irrespective of whether I agree or not, but at least it seems like they have well-defined roles for everyone. All right. If I just look at that team, the first thing that strikes me is that A.B. de Villiers' keeping is not going to happen. I don't know if that's a conscious call. Uh, Washington soon out in the tournament now deep. So, does like Bharat occupies what would be a keeper's role necessarily? I mean, we've listed de Villiers as keeper. For all you know, he might keep. But does he have the components of a T20 keeper batsman as well? Uh, listen, I mean, he's been around for a while, so obviously he's he's improved. He's mm -hmm. he's a much better batter than what I saw him. I think 2014, 15 is. Uh, he he started off with a double hundred in Ranji Trophy, by the way. In the very first season, he got a double hundred. Uh, so obviously he's, he's a good batter, uh, but more orthodox, more orthodox. But I'm sure he's he's picked up a few uh, T20 shots as well, and and he's been around even the fringes of the Indian team for a while now, Kona Bharat. So I think he should be. And won't be surprised if you see him keep because for me, I think he's a he's a keeper who can bat rather than a batter who can keep. Hmm, all right, just waiting for Ian Bishop to join us again, but we can keep the chat going. Hasaranga gets yeah. a debut deep, impressive against India in that series. So yeah. RCB have two leg spinners, including Yuzvendra Chahal, who, of course, surprisingly, perhaps to some, did not make the cut for the India's T20 World Cup squad. How do you see them going together? Uh, that's interesting because uh, I, I think he's a really good cricketer, Vanandu Hasaranga. I mean, obviously, he's a match winner with the ball and, and a very, very useful bat as well. Uh, hmm. So, that's, that's I, I think it's a good call. Uh, irrespective of how the surface, is, uh, surface would be, it could be, you know, more uh, conducive to seam bowlers or fast bowlers. But if you have a wrist spinner and wrist spinner who can give you control, who can pick wickets for you, I think any surface is, is good enough for them. So, it, it'll be interesting, Chahal and uh, Hasranga together. Hmm. We spoke of RCB's bowling and Bish is back with us. Bish, have I got you back with us? Yeah. No, well, you're muted. As long as you can unmute. As long as you can unmute, you've got, I've got you. It's nothing to do with you. <laughs> Bish, come on. You're half the man without that voice of yours that all of us love so much. Get back. <laughs> get back. Get back. Get back. Get back. All right, uh, I'll come to Ian Bishop in just a second. But let's talk about RCB's bowlers now. And that was one concern the bowlers this season. Every year, there brings a problem. It seemed like Kyle Jemson and Harshal Patel, the purple cap holder at this point, had solved some of that. Moving to the UAE now, does that benefit RCB's selection of bowlers? Siraj is playing as well today, or will they have some challenges? Uh, I, I think that benefits. I think someone like Kyle Jemison, as it is, he's quick. He 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 got he gets that extra bounce as well. And on this surface, obviously, he's going to get more bounce than what we see in in India. So that's going to help him. Uh, I think Siraj in the death has is a much improved bowler. I think this season he's going at around eight and over in the death over. So he's uh, I think before that he was around 11, 11 and a half. So he's a much improved death uh, over bowlers. Harshal. Obviously, he's currently the holder of the purple cap, uh, but he's been a little expensive in the depth. But he has this knack of picking up very, very important wickets at very important stages of the game. Yeah, take, take me through your thoughts of our bowlers. 
Jameson, Harshal Patel, are we fans? Harshal Patel carrying on that ridiculous form that he had in the first half with 17 wickets is the purple cap holder. How do you see the bowling going as things move to the UAE for RCB? Uh, I like what Hindu has around. Uh, I think seeing him in the Caribbean, seeing him internationally, uh, he gives you control, a little bit of mystery. So I'm hoping that he can have the same impact from a fast bowler's or seam bowler's point of view. I'm a little bit worried that the last four games that Harshal Patel has played, uh, yes, he got wickets earlier. But he's been going at 12 and over on average in those last four yeah. games, and the wickets haven't been coming as regularly. So uh, he hoped that the little break that he got is rest and rejuvenation and time for him to introspect and work on his game. Jameson, still a work in progress. He's confessed that he's trying to fine tune his T20 game, but he's got that resource of bounce, a little bit of pace, and swing if it is there. So it's a, it's a promising, uh, and as Deep said, Siraj, much improved. Uh, across formats of the game. So I'm excited to continue seeing what they can bring to the table, that combination of spin and pace. Mm, Devda Parikkal and Virat Kohli have made their way out to the centre in blue. RCB with the wonderful cause of uh, supporting the COVID uh, warriors and their relief efforts. So uh, that's what they'll be donning today. Blue for RCB and Virat Kohli, of course, headlining last night's conversation on Cricket News and Cricket Twitter that he won't be captain of RCB after this season. Looks like Dinesh Karthik's up to the stumps. I'm very curious to see who's got the new ball. And if it is Varun Chakravarti, Deep, perhaps a quick word on him. Makes the India T20 squad. Yuzvendra Chahal doesn't. Uh, Rahul Chair made it. Chakravarti made it. He just picked up those two wickets in that Sri Lanka series. Do you see how Varun bowls in this part of the IPL is what could decide whether he starts for India in the World Cup? Absolutely. I, I think the team has shown a lot of faith. The Indian selectors have shown a lot of faith in him. Uh, and and it's going to be very, very important. I think this this second leg of IPL, at least as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to look at it through the the World Cup lenses. I mean, uh, who's in form? I mean, it's still, mind you, till 10th October, you still have an opportunity of changing your squad as well. So it's going to be a really, really interesting IPL from that perspective. Okay, we just got a minute. So let me try and get Ian Bishop to give me as uh, detailed an answer on this question. It normally takes a little more time. Normally, Vish, when players get rid of their captaincy uh, responsibilities, they play freely. But does the announcement of being relieved of captaincy also help you play a little more freely? <laughs> um, it should. Yeah. In theory, it should. Mm. He, 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 will, he will have gotten the news out there, whatever has been going on in the various dressing rooms in which he's been in, whether it's RCB or, or India. Uh, he's now... Let everyone know where he stands. He knows where he stands. Um, so I think I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it reflects itself in the rest of this IPL because RCB. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there's an audition for Varun Chakravarti as he bowls with the new ball to Virat Kohli as uh, these two teams uh, kick off in Abu Dhabi. Thank you very much, Deepdas Gupta and Ian Bishop. You'll be invoicing at half price for this show, but let's hope the internet stays better. <laughs> and half time on Maruti Smoothie Presents. Then we can go T20 timeout. We will join you after 20 overs of our in Blue. See you then. <laughs> We call it people technology.